Good afternoon. You're listening to Clearing the Air on KFCF 88.1 FM Fresno. I'm your host, Dolores Weller, from the Central Valley Air Quality Coalition. KFCF can be heard from Merced all the way down to Delano, or you can listen online at www.kfcf.org. And this program, Clearing the Air, uh, runs every fourth Friday at 3 p.m. and is your source for air pollution solutions here in the San Joaquin Valley. Um, Our organization, CVAC, is basically a partnership of more than 70 organizations throughout the San Joaquin Valley and state. And uh, we work together to uh, educate the public on the impacts of air pollution. And uh, we work through policy change to improve public health and ensure that everyone has an opportunity to engage in in the process and um, today's show is kind of a a two-part program we want to talk about the American Lung Association's State of the Air report that was recently released and I also want to update listeners on uh, recent air quality planning processes that are happening here in the San Joaquin Valley and it's really important for people to uh, be engaged in this process and so these these two topics go hand in hand. And so to start off to talk about the American Lung Association's report, uh, we have with us on the line from Sacramento, uh, Senior Policy Analyst Will Barrett from the American Lung Association. Will, are you there? Yes. Hi, Dolores. Thank you for having me on the show and uh, for doing all the work you're doing to educate the public on the, the importance of clean air. Thank you, and we value uh, American Lung as as, an, as a partner and member organization of, of CVAC as well. Um, so we know, I think the public is, is really aware of the annual report. Um, can you just kind of give us a, an, an idea of what the report is all about? Sure, happy to, and thank you again. We do find this to be an important annual sort of check-in on air quality across the country. Uh, the American Lung Association, this is our 18th annual State of the Air report. This is the 2017 report that was released just last week. Um, and basically what we do is try to highlight local air pollution issues across the United States. We look at uh, air quality monitoring information that we, we have access to through the federal um, monitoring network. And we look at ozone and particle pollution data from every county in the United States that has a monitor and we assign grades and ranks uh, for the number of um, unhealthy days for ozone or summertime smog pollution, as well as unhealthy days of particle pollution um, and uh, year-round levels of, of annual particle uh, particle levels. Uh, so that would be soot, smoke, and things like that. And what we found is that um, over the course of this report, we've been seeing that California has been making tremendous progress overall in, in cleaning up the air but there's still a lot of challenges ahead of us, and we're facing some of those those air pollution challenges today. Uh, And those challenges really come down to, you know, people living with asthma, having, you know, asthma impacts, uh, emergency room visits, hospitalizations, uh, lung cancer. Uh, Our kids growing up with stunted lung development or slower lung growth, um, lower birth weight in, in children, premature births, and then thousands of deaths every year across uh, the state of California, including over a thousand uh, per year in the valley. But again, we we've seen progress, um, but there's still this this major challenge. And um, I can go right ahead and just tell you the the San Joaquin Valley, in our report this year, all eight counties in the valley received an F grade for each of the three pollution, so a failing grade for each of the three pollution uh, categories that we look at. So there's a real uh, challenge, and there's a lot of work to be done. Right. And, our, you know, something I was curious that if you could expand on is um, the, the grade itself. Is it, Are all grades the same? And kind of go into details to you are mentioning how many unhealthy days. Are we talking about our orange days, our red days, or, or both? And, you know, if a, a certain city receives an F and, and so do we, are we on the same level? Or does it require us to kind of look deeper into the unhealthy number of days? Sure. What we do is we take the uh, a weighted average of the, the number of um, unhealthy days, whether orange or red, 
Um, and we take that a three-year look at the, the number of unhealthy days across those categories and come up with an annual average for the, for the number of unhealthy days per year. Uh, we do that for both ozone pollution and particle pollution days. And then for annual particle pollution, we look at whether or not um, the annual level is within the, the health-based um, national air quality standard. So when we're looking at these, um, when we consider our grading system, we say if, if a community or a county basically experiences more unhealthy days or a, a greater number of air quality days that are unhealthy, there's an F grade assigned. And so some, some places receive an F grade um, with you know, a few weeks per year. Some places receive an F grade uh, for 150 days per year. Mm -hmm. The point is that there are unhealthy air days that that are being experienced across the state, across the country, and we think it's too many. And we think that we we have solutions that that can really make a difference and and deliver healthy air for, for everyone. Right. And then in addition to that, I know you also provide lists of sort of the, the top uh, cleanest cities across the U.S. and, and the, the dirtiest cities based on the particle pollution that we see in the winter and ozone in the summer. Where do, you know, our eight valley uh, county uh, counties rank in that kind of national perspective? Sure. Well, unfortunately, uh, California cities dominate the list of the 10 most polluted for ozone and particle pollution. And within that top 10, the valley, uh, the major cities in the valley all show up on those top 10 lists, unfortunately. Um, all of the valley cities are among the top 10 you know, for across each of the pollutants. Uh, Bakersfield ranks number one in the country for the most unhealthy particle pollution days, whereas Visalia uh, comes in number one for the, the annual levels of unhealthy pollution. And like I said, we have Bakersfield, Fresno, Visalia, Modesto, Merced, Stockton, all on the top 10 list for the, the various pollutants. So it is a real challenge in the Valley. We all know that. Um, but our report is trying to, to really bring that back to the public's attention, really make sure that we know the, the challenge that, that we face and that we need to do that much more. One of the interesting things that we've been seeing in the report, uh, in this year's report, captures data from a three-year period from 2013 to 2015. And what we saw in that time period was on top of all the diesel pollution, all the wood smoke from fireplaces, all the other local pollution sources, we're also seeing a real impact from you know the drought, the, the wildfires that happen throughout the region. Um, and, and those are just ad- additional signs that we kind of are living in a new normal. We have to do everything we can to, to clean up the local pollution sources. And we have to do that much more because of climate change. Definitely. And in the second part of our show, we will kind of get into some of uh, those details as to what more we can do here in, in the Valley to hopefully, you know, at one point get our get our cities off of these lists um, and uh, move, in, move in the right direction. And one thing I've appreciated about the, the this annual report is um, sort of evaluating the trends. I know that you've... Um, uh, in past years have been able to point to uh, improvements in ozone and but yet an increase in our wintertime pollution is that still true with this particular report yes actually this this year's report we see that somewhat even more pronounced those, mm-hmm. those same trends that you mentioned we've seen ozone pollution continue to drop across the valley um, some places have seen reductions in ozone pollution of 60 percent or ozone days i should say of 60 percent 45 percent across the region. And that's uh, basically testimony to the strength of the Clean Air Act. Um, our report goes back to the year, the 2000 uh, year that we issued the report. And we've seen significant drops in the number of unhealthy ozone days. There's no, no question there. What we have seen over the last several reports, unfortunately, is increasing numbers of unhealthy particle pollution days, increasing annual levels of particle pollution. So it really speaks to the fact that we're dealing with um, two types of pollution, and we want to make sure that the public understands that summertime smog is summertime smog, and that's uh, the vehicle standards, the clean truck p- programs, other other things like that are really driving down uh, ozone pollution, while at the same time we're dealing with uh, the need to really do more to clean up particle pollution. We need to do uh, redouble our efforts on, you know, curving wood smoke from our, from our homes and um, charbroiling at restaurants and, and looking at uh, tighter diesel pollution control, but also looking at the need for the overall transition of our motor vehicle fleet to zero emission technologies, even, you know, everything from our cars and trucks to 
um, you know, transit buses that we're seeing roll out across the, the the valley that are running on battery electric technology, and 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 even you know localized uh, delivery trucks and and eventually long haul truck uh, technologies are going to have to be um, fully supported. Right, and you you touched on it just a little in the beginning, but why is why is it important to know about um, PM two point five? And, and in particular, wanted to talk about that since we're kind of in the middle of a planning process. Um, I feel like you know CVAC and our partners. We try to do our best to um, you know educate the public about the the health impacts. Could you talk a little bit more about the short term and long term health impacts from PM two point five and why we should really pay attention to 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 this annual report and and get involved sure it, it, it's vitally important to get involved first and foremost you have to be an advocate for yourself and your family and your community and getting involved in these these planning processes related to air quality is just so vitally important i'll start with that but really want to note that you know particle pollution is a is a deadly pollution uh, form of pollution it's um, much smaller than a human hair it can get deep into our lungs, uh, actually pass into our bloodstream. So not only causing um, respiratory health impacts like asthma attacks, uh, affecting people with COPD, uh, lung cancer, it can have effects on, uh, pr- you know, before we're born with uh, pre- premature births, low birth weights. Uh, it can affect our children's lung development as they when they grow up in, in areas with higher particle pollution. Um, but also, when it crosses into the deep into the lungs and crosses into the bloodstream, it, we're looking at uh, strokes and heart attacks and premature death due to cardiovascular impacts. It, it's a it's a very damaging pollutant and one that we have to do everything we can possibly do uh, to eliminate from our air. Right, definitely important, and and I, I don't think that we can we can say that enough. You know that we can't we can't get that information out enough, and so. Um, Getting people involved in the process is also, you know, being aware and uh, making sure our medical community is aware of, of the impacts of, of air pollution as well is, is uh, critical. Um, before we let you go, Will, do you want to share what ALA, the American Lung Association in California, is doing um, to, to take action, to, to um, kind of take this information and, and, and do something with it? What, is, what are some of the top priorities for your organization? Sure. I would say among the, the highest priorities we have is, is calling on the Trump administration and EPA Administrator Pruitt to fully fund and implement and enforce the Clean Air Act at the federal level and make sure that our um, at the state level that we continue to, to focus on um, doing everything we can really to clean up the transportation sector and stationary sources of pollution, our refineries and oil and gas operations. Um, we need to really keep the pressure on to clean up the air. We can't go back. We can't slow down. We know that uh, the climate change crisis is, is really forcing our hand in that regard. And also in, the, in the, the areas we can all do more, we can you know look at ways to um, cut down on our own pollution impacts, whether that's through carpooling or walking and biking when taking transit when we can. Or even, you know, looking for grant uh, programs that the local air district has or, or state funding to trade out our old wood stoves and fireplaces for cleaner heating options like electric heat pumps or other things like that. Um, there's a whole slew of things that the Lung Association is, is working on, um, but really we want to do everything we can to protect the progress we've had and really make sure that there are no barriers in our way to, to cleaning up the air. Great. Thanks so much for being on the show, Will. We've been talking to Will Barrett, a senior policy analyst from the American Lung Association in California. Um, thanks so much, Will, for joining. And uh, we'll continue the, the conversation here. Uh, you're listening to KFCF Fresno 88.1 FM. And uh, we're going to keep talking about the PM 2.5 uh, planning process. Um, so, uh, second segment of our show now that we know we're we're in the situation that we're in we um as will 
uh, explained to us earlier, uh, we have, you know, all of our eight counties receiving an F on the American Lung Association's report, and we're also in the top ten of uh, the dirtiest cities uh, nationally. So really important for um, listeners to get involved in the policy advocacy uh, of, of air quality here in the San Joaquin Valley. Uh, to give you some background, for PM 2.5, which we were just talking about, our local air district puts together air quality plans based on the health standards determined by uh, EPA. They're based on science and health what is healthy for us to breathe and the local districts must produce a plan Uh, normal process unfortunately has been that our local district would produce produce a plan and that would get passed through the state air resources board and then passed to epa and uh, normal process has been that at that level it would be kicked back and um, for not having met the Clean Air Act standards um, and, and uh, highlighting that there is more that should be done locally. October 2016, our coalition, our partners um, demanded that this, this vicious cycle um, come to an end and we, do, we cannot push through these uh, inadequate plans. And so in October, the State Air Resources Board was reviewing the district's uh, most recent PM 2.5 plan. And um, they acknowledged that more needs to be done. And uh, advocates raised uh, a dozen different measures that um, could be looked at within uh, our local control. As we've mentioned in the past, there's, uh, you know, a distribution of, of, of authority. You have the local district, which is accountable for the stationary source, sources of air pollution, and then you have um, the state air resources board that is responsible for our mobile sources. Um, and so we recognize there's more that the local district could do with stationary sto- sources, pollution that is homegrown here in the San Joaquin Valley. And so they decided to reject the state air resources board, decided to reject that plan and uh, ask staff to go back to the drawing board and create a plan that includes further measures. And so for the past six months, our coalition and our partners have been engaging in meetings, uh, public work group meetings, public workshops with the local district, the state air resources board, and the environmental protection agency along with the community. And, uh, you know, we're we're getting to a point where uh, the state air resources board will be soon uh, revealing to their board what is it that they've learned over the last six months and what more the local air district could be doing. Um, And one of our major uh, requests to the State Air Resources Board and the agencies involved is to really evaluate all of these uh, ideas of, you know, we, I think we all put together, you know, great ideas on how we can reduce air pollution, but we need to be able to, to put that into a, a model and see how many uh, tons of emissions per day we would actually see reduced with a particular measure or policy uh, in place. And so our coalition has, has drafted a, a, a list of, of priority areas and we're, we're uh, working with the agencies to produce that analysis. And I want to make sure everyone is aware, and if you don't have a pin handy now, we'll try to put this up on our Facebook page, but uh, we there are some upcoming meetings that I think is are they're really important for the public to engage in. Uh, Possibly May 17th, that is a tentative date. Uh, there, there's going to be a workshop here in Fresno. The State Air Resources Board will be conducting a, a workshop, um, sort of vetting the the information that um, you know they've gathered over over the last six months on what more the Valley could do to reduce PM 2.5, and that's 
leading up to a really important meeting in Sacramento, May 25th. And that is confirmed May 25th. Um, it's a Thursday. And uh, CVAC and our partners will be attending. So if that's something that you'd like to join in on and, and uh, be a part of the public comment uh, period at that meeting, we'd appreciate that. Um, and you can find more information on facebook.com slash SJV Clean Air. And so at that meeting, May 25th, the Air Resources Board will be um, presenting those final um, recommendations that our local air district could be looking into. And then further out in the fall, uh, there will be an, a, a plan that will be adopted or not, depending on what, what is in the plan that is produced here locally. And as I've mentioned in, in past shows, we have our challenges here in the San Joaquin Valley. The Air District uh, is governed by a board, uh, board members made up of city council members and board of supervisors here in the San Joaquin Valley. And the majority of them, majority, are do have deep ties to a lot of our polluting industries here in the San Joaquin Valley. That is the reality. We have some uh, great advocates on the board as well, um, but uh, definitely outnumber Dr. Sheriffs, who is a physician from Fowler, and Dr. Capitman, who is a professor at Fresno State, um, are definitely public health advocates and uh, do have your your health in mind in their, their decision-making and their comments. Um, but um, there are some new members on the board, and so there are opportunities as well. So I encourage you to um, go to valleyair.org, this is the district's website, and look at the uh, board members and see which represents you, which um, board member represents you in your, your county, your city, and uh, get in touch with them. Let them know that you know air quality is important to you. Um, and I wanted to talk about what are some of those things that CVAC is, is asking for. What are what can we do? And I'll just t- touch on some high priority ones. One we've heard a lot from community because this is something that you know is really hitting home is fireplaces you know in your home we know that it does contribute to a large portion of our pm 2.5 problem here it is a local uh source of pollution um and it's something the district does have control over currently there's a program that you know they provide incentive funding to switch out your old fireplace and get a new epa certified unit um but there is more that can be done with the actual uh, burn threshold requirement. So, you know, some days you're allowed to burn and some you're not. Um, but that threshold could be more stringent. And we think that that threshold should be down to um, what is the federal health standard at the moment, which is like 12 micrograms per cubic meter. And it's currently much higher and it varies depending on the device you have and i think that's very confusing to the public um i think everyone should just know it's not a it's a not a burn day today and for everyone no matter what device you have and that also poses a challenge for enforcement for the um the uh inspectors who work at the district to be able to distinguish between clean units and uh, dirty units when be, when reporting uh, when people are reporting those uh, in violation so that is an area that we think there's a, a clear opportunity we can lower the threshold and we want to see the agencies model that and see what are the potential emissions uh, reduced Another area is um, charbroiling. Will Barrett from the American Lung Association mention that? Um, this is also a significant source of our PM 2.5 problem, um, commercial cooking. So we're talking about, um, you know, some of the, you know, bigger um, chain restaurants that have uh, charbroilers, uh, tri-bro- charbroiler burger type establishments. And there are some uh, restaurants that we know of here in the valley and um, uh, in, you know across the state that are doing the right thing and that are putting the right type of technology in their restaurants in order to reduce the PM 2.5 emissions. For example, I believe Habit Burger is um, in the process of switching out all of their uh, restaurants that also are in the San Joaquin Valley 
to uh, the more uh, the cleaner um, charbroiling units, and so that is some that's an opportunity there for the district to say all. Uh, restaurants that have this type of, of, of charbroiling system to require them. Uh, we understand that's not always the you know the easiest sell. So we're um, asking the agencies to model what would it what would it look like if we incentivized it? If the agencies offered funding uh, for a temporary period to then move towards a regulation um, where where wherein the restaurants would be required to have that cleanest technology. So that's another area that you know we'd be happy to to share more information on um, to to get everyone up to speed. Another area is open burning. So you may have seen in the past year or two a little bit more agricultural burning than normal. Um, Ag burning is actually outlawed, but in recent years, uh, the Air District has allowed uh, growers to um, burn their uh, woody waste uh, due to some of the biomass facilities dwindling, and really no other mechanism is set in place at the moment for growers to really um, be motivated to to reincorporate into their soil, to compost it. Um, There really needs to be uh, a discussion and um, a kind of, you know, bringing together all the agencies that that uh, work with growers that provide incentives and, and coordinating those efforts to make sure there is a new system that uh, moves us away from open ag burning. And uh, that's something that um, our our local air district uh, has been uh, kind of slow to commit to. And, uh, you know, we as advocates, I think that's another area that we definitely need to see the modeling, the potential of how, you know, how would we, um, how much pollution we'd be able to reduce by completely banning open burning and incentivizing um, more sustainable uh, ag practices of disposing of woody waste. Um, So that's another area that we can continue working on. Um, And so those are kind of top three priority but i have a dozen or so and you know we we encourage you to get more involved with um cvac and the public workshops that i mentioned so i encourage you to go to facebook.com slash sjv clean air we'll have the events posted there and we'll have some fact sheets and um presentations information that'll that'll help you um be aware of you know of all of the different uh, pollution sources and what are the opportunities. And we would love to, you know, have you attend meetings and raise your personal story of how PM 2.5 impacts you and your health and any other ideas that, that you're interested in sharing. Um, so again, uh, those, those dates that are coming up, uh, May 17th, put that on your calendar, and May 25th in, in Sacramento. May 17th is in Fresno. Um, and we'll, we'll update you on that as, as those become available. Um, so thank you for, for listening to today's show. This has been Clearing the Air on KFCF Fresno 88.1 FM. I'm your host, Dolores Weller from the Central Valley Air Quality Coalition. Have a great afternoon.